Hey guys, welcome to Retro Crisis. In today's video, I'll show you how I configure the HDR settings in RetroArch. Now, I'll try my best to be as clear as possible and I'll try to explain things as I go along, but I can totally understand if I lose you at any point. So in my mind, I think this one might be for more intermediate RetroArch users that are a bit more familiar with the RetroArch menu structure. Anyway, before opening RetroArch, make sure that you have HDR enabled in your operating system. So whether you're using Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever, Android, go to the relevant system's display settings, find the HDR option and enable it. If you don't see the HDR option, there's a good chance that your system doesn't support HDR. Maybe it's a non-HDR display, I don't know. I'm gonna leave that to you to go figure out. To be on the safe side, after enabling HDR in your operating system, sometimes you might need to restart your machine for the settings to take effect. And on some systems, it works immediately. I'll leave that to you to decide how you'd like to progress. But anyway, on my system, I've enabled HDR in my display settings, and now I have RetroArch open. So the first bit of configuration is, go to settings, video, output, and video. These are the video drivers that are available within RetroArch. In this case, I'm going to select Vulkan. It's the one I've had the best experience with. Once you've selected Vulkan, I recommend you shut down RetroArch and open it up again. Next, go to settings, user interface, appearance, opacity, and go into it and change this to zero. So go all the way up, go to zero. And now the background has disappeared. Now let's go back and back again and back to the main menu. Now we're going to load up a game. Ideally, it would be great if it could be something that's very colorful and maybe a game that you know very well. So that way, if something looks a bit wrong, you'll know immediately. In this case, I'm going to be going down to Super Nintendo and I'm going to be using Street Fighter 2 as the game that I'm going to use to configure HDR and run. Now, once you're in your game, find a scene that is, you know, full of different colors, dark elements, light elements, you know, something with a nice mix. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your camera phone or whatever, and you're going to take a picture of this screen and double check your picture and make sure it looks similar to what you see on the screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this photo as a reference image. So when we do configure the HDR, we have a reference image that we can try and replicate and I'm going to show you why. Now, press F1 to go to the quick menu, and you'll notice that the background of the menu is totally transparent, and that's related to the opacity setting that we changed earlier. Now, the menu might be a little bit difficult to see at the moment, but it will all make sense why we've done this very soon. So let's go back and back again until we're back to the main menu, go down to settings, go across to video, and then go down until you get to HDR and select it. Now we can turn it on and suddenly everything's vanished. Don't worry, it's very normal behavior. Let's press F1 to go back to the game. So currently I've got it paused. If I just unpause it and then repause it, there we go, we get the image back again. Now you can probably tell immediately that the image looks very blown out. The colors look very faded. Nothing here looks like it should. And this is where our reference image comes in useful. So press F1 to go back to the HDR menu. Now, first thing on this menu, go all the way down to the bottom until you get to expand gamut and turn this on. Now, let's go back up. Now, there are three settings that we need to tweak on the HDR menu. There's peak luminance, paper white luminance, and contrast. Now, these are the default out of the box settings. They're not ideal, at least in my case. They might work perfectly for you, I don't know. But we can tweak these settings to try and recreate the colors as they look on our reference image. Now, firstly, I'm going to zoom in on Chun-Li's face because her face has many light colors and currently on the HDR image, you know, she's just all blown out. So what you wanna do one by one is you just wanna cycle through these settings and try to figure out which one works best for you. So firstly, let's have a look how each one of these settings impacts the image. So currently the peak luminance is at 1000, but if we take it down to zero, it doesn't make a difference. We take it all the way up to say 4,000. Doesn't seem to make much of a difference. Okay, so as that's not making a difference, I think it's safe to assume we can just leave it back at the default setting. Now, paper white luminance is currently at 200X. So if we take that down to zero, 
suddenly the image goes dark. But if we just press right on our keyboard, you can see how paper white luminance is affecting the image. So if we keep going all the way up, suddenly our image is very blown out. So what I'll do is I'm going to reduce this number until Chun-Li's face looks somewhat like the reference image. So let's keep going down. Not quite there yet. Okay, I've gone down a bit too far. Try to see if we can replicate that shadow under eyes. Okay, nice and bright. Okay, there we go. I think that's about right. I'm going to leave it at 100. Next is contrast. So currently it's set to five. So let's go all the way down, see what it looks like. Okay, that does not look so great. Now let's go all the way to the end, see what happens. Okay, so that's the extreme. Now let's go down very slowly until we get a somewhat pleasing image. And there we go. Oh, back at five. Now let's press F1 to return to the game. And let's see how this compares to our reference image. And I don't think we're too far off, actually. Now Ryu's face looks a bit too contrasty. So let's go F1. Let's see if we adjust the contrast, if it makes much of a difference. Okay, now let's go up a little bit here, maybe 530. And let's change the paper white luminance down a notch. Nope, maybe not. Let's leave it at 90. And now let's go back to the game. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. So in a nutshell, that's how you configure HDR correctly, at least in my view, in RetroArch. I hope this video was useful for you. This has been Retro Crisis. Thank you for watching.